everybody welcome back to out by the popcorn my name is stephanie thank you all for clicking on this video now if you're someone who enjoys talking about film how about clicking that subscribe button now with valentine's day being a week away i thought it would be fun to recommend 14 romantic movies to you guys Now I am going to be doing this ranking a little bit different, not quite like what I did with my Christmas videos, but kind of in the same way where it's an unofficial ranking system uh, because unfortunately one of my favorite movies of all times is technically not going to be number one but when we get there i'm gonna of course let you know it's one of my favorite movies of all time now i do have six different categories and those are horror sci-fi action we got the 2000s and 90s and just full-on tear jerkers of course it's like horror romantic action romantic so it has some sort of romance within the movie um again we're in no particular order we're just gonna kind of start off with horror and then we're gonna work our way down to the tear jerkers or a more dramatic Way I like to say it, a romantic movie where one of the main characters has a disease, has a daily, daily disease. Will they make it throughout the film? Will they not? Cue the tissues. <laughs> I pretty much have two to three different recommendations in each of these categories. So we're going to start off with horror. 2009's My Bloody Valentine 3D. Yeah, remember those cheesy little 3D glasses with the blue and the red? Now, up until today, honestly, I did not realize that this version, well, this super cheesy version, is a remake out of a popular 1980s uh, slasher film. So I, unfortunately, have not seen the original one, but from what I I read from when I was looking up today the original one is like 10 times or 100 times way 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 better than this cheese ball here but this is the one that I saw so this is the one that I'm officially recommending I couldn't not put this damn movie in here because it has the word Valentine on there Valentine I think I said Valentine <laughs> Valentine on there this movie had everything I love in a slasher type of movie we got blood we got guts we got serial killers we got murders there's nothing unique about it to be honest with you we even have the typical serial killer dressed in a minor suit who is terrorizing a small town we of course have never seen that before have we hmm. next up will be the bride of Chucky because of course I gotta incorporate a Chucky movie and nothing more romantic than Chucky getting married. And it's just so funny how this like epic 80s slasher series ended up turning into this. You know, like, I mean, this was still good. Like, I really, really enjoy it. But then like from here is like, like avalanche. Because, you know, of course, we got followed up with the seed of Chucky. Which, you know, it's like terrible. But then I still kind of enjoy it. It's... One of those, like, it's so bad, but yet you watch it, and then, like, afterward, you're like, why the fuck did I watch this? Moving on to sci-fi, and it's going to be 2013's Her, that stars Joaquin Phoenix, uh, and we do get uh, oh, just the voice of Scarlett Johansson, who pl uh, plays a brand new OS system, that's right. She's just a computer, kind of like Siri, Alexa, but very, very, very much more advanced because they could actually interact and talk to you and form relationships but it's a very very beautiful unusual romantic tell uh we are following theodore who is in the forming a relationship with uh samantha now it sounds very weird very unusual but you should definitely give it a shot if you never have moving on to 2004's eternal sunshine of the spotless mind that stars jim carrey kate winslet who actually got nominated for an oscar for her performance in this movie uh the screenplay was also nominated for an oscar it does have a great script a great cast it, i mean it's an amazing cast like i said we have jim carrey we have kim winslet uh, we have uh, Kristen Dunst, uh, Mark Ruffalo, uh, Elijah Wood. Uh, I'm totally blanking out on so many other people. If you haven't seen it, it's a must, must, must watch. Great, amazing performances. Great, amazing film. Moving on to the 2000s. I think that's what we're up next. <laughs> no, action. Moving on to action. First up in action would be Deadpool. That is right. Deadpool. Ryan Reynolds has said that it is a bit of a love story and it really is you guys there is a love story involved. We get part of this superhero universe but I am going to incorporate part one and part two. Part one is the love story and then we get part two. We get the tragedy that happens straight up at the beginning and we get like one of the best opening credits. I mean Deadpool. 
I'm, I'm not really gonna go much into it. Let's move on to 2012's This Means War. This stars Reese Witherspoon, and of course you have to have a Reese Witherspoon film in here because it's freaking Reese, who's like the queen of romantic movies. Sadly, I think this is the only one because I had to choose. Unfortunately, I don't have Sweet Home Alabama, but it was really hard because I was gonna have that on here. But just know you guys, Sweet Home Alabama is an honorable mention. So we also have Chris Pine and Tom Hardy who are best friends or CIA operatives. They end up falling for the same girl. Basically the two friends, they don't tell Reese that they know each other or anything and they're like, you know what, we're gonna have her pick. And they don't really make each other's um, dates very, very easy. They of course interfere. And it's a lot, a lot of fun. Because again, CIA operatives, so there's like a lot of like shooting and like espionage with like the, the sleeping shooting uh, tranquilizer. That's what a tranquilizer deal. So now we are moving over to the 2000s. And of course, of course. We have to have The Notebook. This, of course, is based off of a Nicholas Spark book, and we are following um, Ali and Noah and their love story. Again, cue the tissues. <laughs> and, of course, I'm not going to say anything else about The Notebook because it's a notebook, and if you haven't seen The Notebook, how dare you not have seen this damn movie? You go watch it right now. So moving on to 2004's 51st Date. When I was doing this list and I was telling people about it, I said, don't you touch my 50 first dates. This is one of my favorite movies of all time as well. It does star Adam Sandler and Drew Barrymore. And this just shows you the lips that love can go towards. We have Henry who just falls head over heels for Lucy. Unfortunately does not know that Lucy suffers from short term memory loss. So when she goes to sleep at night, her mind just resets and just forgets the whole encounter. Every day, you guys. He's like, I'm going to find a way whether it is I'm about to get kidnapped. I'm going to save you from a penguin who's crossing the road, from somebody who's trying to attack somebody. And it's just so, so, so much fun. Moving on to the 90s. This is going to be 1999's Boys Don't Cry, starring Hilary Swank as Brendan, who is a female to male transgender. It is a biopic. Now, this is going to be the only one that I am talking spoilers for the most part, just because I do want to pre-warn you. It is very hard to watch because there is a rape scene and it is very rough. It's, it's, I think it's like two guys or three guys. So enough with this very hard to watch movie that I actually really, really love. Um, it, it's a great movie. It's one of my favorite like based on a true story movies, but it is very, very difficult to watch. It gets very violent, but totally, totally if you're up for it, it's not for the faint of heart, but if you are up for it, I totally recommend it. Now moving on to a more kind of happier movie, but not really. We're still very, very dark. There's also a murder. We are going from 1999 to the early 90s, 1990s Ghost. So this stars Patrick Swayze as Sam, Demi Moore as Molly, and Whoopi Goldberg as Otome Brown. Not only do we get a little nice romantic story in there, but we do get a murder. We get a friend backstabbing and now Sam needs to learn how to like freaking move some shit and finds another ghost that's mean and knows how to move stuff it's like you're gonna help me and get that nice little like clay moment with that nice little music because you know I don't, yeah I know I can't sing and the damn song's not coming to my mind it was the righteous brothers for sure that the clay that clay movement y'all know y'all be wanting to do that damn clay thing and moving back over to 1999 this is the movie that is that would have been my number one if i had done it you know in order this is one of my favorite movies of all all time this is 1999's 10 things i hate about you it is a more modern day version of william shakespeare's uh the taming of the shrew we got the late Heath Ledger, which I believe this was his first movie. He does great. We got Julia Stiles. We got Joseph Gordon-Levitt. Uh, Gabriel Union asshole had a small bro in here. I feel like 10 Things I Hate About You is one of the most beloved, iconic, romantic, comedy, teen movies ever made. I love it. They're great performances. Again, all these like up and comers. It is very cleverly written. It has really funny dialogue. It's just a great movie, you guys. I freaking love it. I always talk about uh, 10 things ahead about you. So we're going to go ahead and move on to the tear jerkers. <laughs> so first up would be 2002's a walk to remember now this is another nicholas spark book of course we have jamie who is the goody two-shoe christian 
She's the daughter of the pastor. Uh, she's in choir. And then we have the bad boy, Landon. Of course, these two are bound to fall in love once they get pushed together. I think every single time I watch this movie, I cry. It's sweet. It's so innocent. I love it. Early 2000s, cheesy. Now, before I do give you my final two movies on my list, in case you're wondering where where was this and where is that? One, didn't make it on the two that I really do love from each of these categories. I will say though, for the horror, I don't think I said it when I said it, when I did my thing. I wasn't gonna put my Bloody Valentine. I was gonna put the Lost Boys. I know some of you are probably like, Stephanie, you should have put the damn Lost Boys. I know, I know. And both of them I've only seen a handful of times. Overall, I do prefer the Lost Boys, but again, my Bloody Valentine, it has fucking Valentine in the movie, title. I'm talking about Valentine's movie, so yeah, we're gonna keep it maybe on this list over here, which means I have not seen it yet. Uh, so maybe next year, si Dios me presta vida, I'll be doing maybe like first time watches and I'll do like reviews on these particular films. I do want to watch them with that. We're gonna keep moving forward with 2019's Five Feet Apart. I love this movie so much. We have Stella, we have Will, they both have cystic fibrosis, which you kind of learn about the disease as well. When you have this, you really can be in contact with uh, somebody else who has the same disease because it's like terrible. You, you have to be six feet apart from the short time that they're together, how they're living their romance, that they want to be together, but of course they know that they cannot be together because they can both die. It's just a fantastic romantic tragedy movie, you guys. The ending, it's just like, you really have to just let go. Last on my list it would be 2014's A Fault in Our Stars. The performances are amazing. It has a great script. It's very funny. It's witty. It's sad. It's heartbreaking. It's okay. No, it's amazing. But if you know the movie, you'll get the reference of okay. That is my list. These are the 14 romantic comedy action drama sci-fi horror movies that i'm recommending for you guys to check out this valentine's day with your significant other with your girls with yourself if you don't have anybody like myself but let me know down below what are your favorite romantic movies whether they just be just full cheesy or if you want to do like subcategory like i did have you seen any of the movies that i've recommended to you guys of course before you guys click out of this video don't forget to give it a like Subscribe to my channel if you haven't yet. I am trying to hit 500 subscribers by the summer, so hopefully you can help me reach that goal. Of course, don't forget to hit the notification bell so you'll be notified each time that I post something new. Until next time, I'll see you guys at concessions. Bye.